The vast darkness of space was broken only by the twinkling of distant stars as the Galvox war fleet emerged from hyperspace. At its head was the Imperial Command ship Renegade, a behemoth over five kilometers long. On the cavernous bridge of the Renegade, Captain Zornith sat upon his engraved obsidian throne, his clawed fingers tapping impatiently on the stone armrests. He was an imposing figure, nearly seven feet tall, with scaly azure skin and a crown of bony ridges atop his hairless head. His cold, reptilian eyes stared out from a face marred by ancient battle scars. Today, after centuries of preparation, was the day Zorneth would achieve his life's ambition, the fall of humanity's homeworld, Earth. For too long, the upstart humans had defied the Galvox Empire, denying them full domination of the Cygnus Arm. But now, Zorneth would crush the human's planet under his boot once and for all. Report, Zorneth growled, his gravelly voice carrying through the bridge. We are approaching the Sol System Perimeter, Excellency, answered his second-in-command, Colonel Vex. Our scanners detect no sign of resistance. A grim smile pulled at Zorneth's lips, revealing rows of serrated teeth. According to his spies, the humans believe this sector of space remote enough to be safe. Their ignorance would be their undoing. Take us in. All ships are to maintain battle formations, Zorneth commanded. He switched on the fleet-wide intercom, pale eyes gleaming in anticipation. Warriors of Galvox, today is the day we crush the human vermin. Fire on my command. A deafening cheer reverberated through the fleet as it surged towards the isolated blue planet called Earth, plasma cannons glowing menacingly. Nothing could stop them now. As Earth loomed closer, Zorneth's heartbeat quickened, thundering in his chest. He hardly dared breathe, transfixed by the sapphire jewel growing ever larger on the main viewscreen. After a lifetime of warfare, this was the exhilarating moment he had thirsted for. Commence bombardment, Zorneth roared. At his word, thousands of searing plasma bolts rained down on the helpless planet below. Cities that had stood for millennia erupted in apocalyptic flames. Roadways liquefied and monuments crumbled as the intense heat vaporized stone and steel. Watching the carnage from orbit, Zorneth was lost in ecstasy drunk on visions of destruction. This was his destiny fulfilled. He imagined the terror as humans fled their burning homes in vain, their prized civilization reduced to smoldering rubble. Bring the particle cannons online. Level their strongest defenses, Zorneth commanded, nearly trembling with anticipation. This would break their spirit completely. The surface boiled as massive beams of exotic particles lanced through the atmosphere, targeting military installations across the globe. Particle cannons could melt through a hundred feet of solid neutronium in seconds. Nothing the humans built could possibly withstand such firepower. Clouds of ash choked the sky now, billowing over a planetary landscape painted in apocalyptic hues of burning red and orange. The few pitiful missiles the humans managed to launch were obliterated long before reaching their targets. The humans are in disarray, Excellency. Ground-based defenses have been reduced to smoldering wreckage, reported Colonel Vex. Zorneth nodded, flames dancing in his eyes. Then, the time has come to deliver the death blow, deploy all invasion forces. Today their civilization falls forever to the Galvox Empire. The skies over Earth darkened as thousands of Galvox dropships descended through the atmosphere, carrying endless legions of invasion troops and mechanized divisions. Amid the raining ash and smoke, the dropships touched down on the scorched wastelands that had once been great cities. Massive loading ramps groaned open, disgorging regiment after regiment of Galvox shock troops, mechs, and artillery onto the devastated landscape. From the flagship Renegade, Captain Zorneth watched the unfolding invasion with triumph burning in his soul. 
At long last, humanity's homeworld would be his. He would preside over the capital's fall himself and personally accept the human surrender. Ready my personal shuttle and invasion escort, he commanded. I descend to the planet's surface at once. Yes, Excellency, acknowledged Colonel Vex. We have received confirmation that Washington, D.C. is secured. The Capitol building and White House lie in ruins with minimal resistance. The humans are beaten. Zornith's chest swelled with savage pride. Let the feeble humans witness him marching through their shattered capital. Their last fleeting hope would soon be crushed beneath his boots. Climbing into a heavily armored drop shuttle flanked by four fighter escorts, Zornith descended through the burning skies to the surface far below. Through the viewports, he watched smoke rising in great columns from the remains of once great cities. The sight filled him with satisfaction. The dropships landed in an open plaza surrounded by the shattered husks of human buildings and sculptures. A legion of elite zealot shock troops stood arrayed before him, armor glinting menacingly in the ruddy light and energy weapons held ready. As Zorneth stepped forth, Colonel Vex approached and bowed his head respectfully. Excellency, the capital is yours. Human forces have been routed across all fronts. Zorneth nodded, gesturing to the desolate cityscape. Then let the wretched humans know their last bastion has fallen. Send scout units to find their leaders. I want them dragged before me. Vex smiled cruelly. It will be done. We also located their ambassador. I presumed you would want the pleasure of his submission personally. Zorneth bared his fangs in a chilling grin. You know me well, Colonel. Bring him to me. I want to watch the hope drain from his eyes as he kneels broken before his conqueror. Within minutes, two zealot shock troopers dragged a ragged human male before Zorneth. His expensive suit was torn and filthy, his face bruised and bleeding. Zorneth loomed over him, folding his arms. Well, well, you must be the ambassador sent to plead for your worthless species, on your knees before the Galvox Empire. The man grimaced in pain but glared up defiantly. I kneel to no one. Kill me if you must. Others will take my place. You have won nothing. Zorneth backhanded him across the jaw, sending him sprawling. He leaned down slowly, meeting the man's dazed eyes. Your world lies in ruins. Your civilization is mine. Where is this defiance now? The man a penis miral in silencio. Zorneth snorted in disgust and turned away. Take this wretch to the prisons. He will serve as entertainment for my warriors. As the broken ambassador was dragged away, Zorneth surveyed his new dominion. For now, he would tour the smoldering capital to savor his victory. Soon he would summon the human leaders here in chains to formally surrender. Today marked the end of their pathetic species. The galaxy now belonged to the Galvox Empire. Amid the smoke rising from Washington, D.C.'s ravaged buildings, the human ambassador was roughly escorted by Galvox soldiers toward a waiting dropship. Blood dripped from his split lip as he walked with his head held high despite the hopelessness of his situation. Once inside the shuttle, the doors sealed and the guards withdrew. Alone at last, the ambassador allowed himself a defiant smile. The arrogant Galvox had fallen right into his trap, leaving Earth's true defenses untouched. Now it was time for the humans to unleash their full fury. Touching his bruised jaw tenderly, he opened a secure quantum entangled communicator, eyes blazing with purpose. This is Ambassador Duncan. Operation Hammerstrike is a go. All units attack with full force immediately. Far above Earth, hidden in the inky blackness of space, hundreds of sleek and deadly human warships flashed into existence as one, dropping their cloaking fields simultaneously. While the Galvox were distracted bombing empty decoy cities on Earth's surface, mankind had quietly assembled a secret battle fleet of unimaginable power. For years, Humanity had prepared in the darkness,
developing weapons to rival the wrath of the gods themselves. As the Galvox grew complacent, consumed by dreams of conquest, humankind had toiled ceaselessly, ready for this prophesied day. Now, the klaxons of war had finally sounded. As one, the Shining Fleet opened fire, unleashing the full fury they had pent up for so long. Deadly lances of particle energy cored through the unshielded Galvox ships, reducing them to atomized fragments in mere seconds. The fleet of endless victory, pride of the Galvox armada, vanished in the blink of an eye. On the flagship Renegade, emergency klaxons blared as explosions rocked the behemoth ship. Captain Zorneth gripped his throne to remain upright, shock and disbelief warring across his face. Status report, he bellowed over the din. Where did these human ships come from? His second-in-command, Colonel Vex, was frantically scanning data screens. Unknown, Excellency. Their fleet just decloaked from nowhere. Our scanners never detected. He was cut off as a massive explosion detonated nearby, consuming dozens of crew in an inferno. Zorneth shielded his face from the flash, watching helplessly on tactical displays as his ships winked out by the dozens, shredded by the humans' fearsome new energy weapons. In mere minutes, nothing remained but swirling atoms dispersing in space. Zorneth slammed a clenched fist on his throne. How can their weapons have such power? No civilization should possess this strength. On the bridge of his flagship, the Indomitable, Ambassador Duncan watched the last of the Galvox ships disappear from his tactical display. The arrogant invaders had never comprehended mankind's capabilities until it was too late. Now their ignorance had sealed their doom. Opening a secure channel, Duncan confronted the battered and humiliated Zorneth aboard his crippled flagship. This was your final warning. Any further hostile action against Earth or its allies will be met with annihilation. Zorneth's scarred face twisted in impotent fury, his composure shattered. This changes nothing, human. We will return with a thousand ships and drown your world in nuclear fire. Your civilization will die screaming. Duncan's expression remained hard as stone. While you wasted away in delusions of power, we prepared for this day. You never comprehended humanity's true strength until we unleashed it. Take these worthless remnants of your armada and flee. Closing the channel, Duncan watched as the last surviving Galvox ships turned and limped away, fleeing like whipped curs with their tails between their legs. Only now did he finally allow himself a smile of satisfaction. After long years of waiting silently in the darkness, humanity's time in the galactic arena had arrived at last. Aboard the ravaged bridge of his flagship Renegade, Captain Zorneth unleashed a thunderous roar of fury that echoed through the lifeless corridors. Showers of sparks cascaded around him as he smashed his fist repeatedly into the already ruined command console, desperately trying to exorcise the volcanic rage boiling inside him. His second-in-command, Colonel Vex, picked his way cautiously through the haze of smoke and ringing alarm klaxons until he stood before his commander. Excellency, I implore you, you must get control of yourself. Destroying our own ship will gain us nothing now, Vex urged, having to shout over the din. Zorneth whirled with a guttural shriek, seized Vex by the throat and slammed him bodily against the bulkhead. Vex's feet dangled helplessly as Zorneth tightened his iron grip around his neck. Control myself? Zorneth thundered, spraying Vex's face with spittle. Our entire invasion fleet lies in ruins. We have suffered the greatest defeat in Galvox history at the hands of these wretched humans. Zorneth's claws tightened further, choking the very life from Vex's bulging eyes. The humans were to be insects beneath our boots. Instead, they wield weapons to shake the heavens themselves. With a final roar of disgust, Zorneth hurled Vex's limp body aside. Vex slumped to the deck, clutching his crushed larynx and struggling to breathe. Still, 
he forced himself upright on trembling legs. Excellency, we clearly underestimated the humans gravely, Vex rasped, massaging his damaged throat. But we must rethink our strategy before more warriors die in vain. Zorneth trembled violently, his massive frame racked with tremors of white-hot fury and soul-crushing shame. Never had he imagined such disgrace was possible. I will not crawl like a dog to these humans and beg for mercy. Zorneth boomed, his scarred visage contorted in apoplectic rage. No, we will scour the Empire for any remaining ships and launch an armada to drown Earth in fire. I will see humanity reduced to ash if it costs my last breath. Vex felt his protest die in his throat as Zorneth stormed from the bridge, still roaring orders to prepare for immediate departure. In his heart, Vex knew any further assault was doomed suicide, but he had no choice but to obey his commander's rage-maddened demands and pray the humans granted them a swift end when the time came. Light years away, aboard the bridge of the ESS Indomitable, Ambassador Duncan stood stoically as the last wisps of the decimated Galvox Armada faded from the tactical displays. He harbored no illusions that the proud Galvox commander would accept this crushing defeat. Duncan silently swore that humanity would be ready when Zorneth returned blinded by dreams of vengeance, heedless of the consequences. There could be no mercy this time, no chance for peaceful resolution. When next they met, only one civilization would survive. As Duncan gazed out the forward viewports at distant Earth, shining bright and blue amid the curtain of stars, he steeled himself for the dark days ahead. But humanity had triumphed over impossible odds before in its long ascent, and mankind would do so again. For failure now meant annihilation. On the Galvox homeworld, great domed cities burned in the throes of anarchy and chaos. Crazed mobs swarmed the streets, smashing property and clashing with riot control troops. The news of the Armada's obliteration at the hands of the humans had spread like wildfire, igniting the volatile population's dreams of vengeance. In the royal palace, the governing High Council chambers echoed with shouted threats and confusion. Council Head Xandar, an aged but hawkish Galvox, pounded a clawed fist on the stone table, struggling to be heard over the din. This disaster is the direct result of Zorneth's bungling incompetence, Xandar bellowed, flecks of spittle flying from his maw. We must marshal our full remaining strength and reduce Earth to molten slag. But council member Vexa refused to shrink before his fury. She rose calmly, meeting Xandar's murderous glare. No, further unthinking violence will only quicken our doom. Vexa continued, her voice ringing with authority. We must open diplomatic channels with the humans before more brave warriors die for no purpose. Only then can we forge a lasting peace. Before Xandar could explode, Armored guards burst in, escorting Ambassador Vax Aran into the chamber. Xandar scrambled for his plasma sidearm, but froze as Vex Aran leveled his own weapon at the council head's skull. The guards moved to restrain a spewing red-faced Xandar. Enough. By authority of this council, I am assuming supreme command of all Galvox military assets, Vax Aran proclaimed. We will seek terms with the humans or share the Armada's fate. In his private chambers, Vax Aran anxiously monitored the spreading riots. Reigning in these passions and guiding his people through the darkness would require extraordinary wisdom and resilience. The humans clearly wielded frightening power, advanced centuries beyond Galvox technology, but open war would gain his people nothing beyond extinction. No, he would help the Galvox transcend their tribal divisions and martial conditioning to forge a new path forward. He would show them their true enemy was not the humans, but their own inward hatred and rage. And united by wisdom and compassion, the Galvox would build a brighter future. Light years away, 
Ambassador Duncan allowed himself a flicker of hope upon learning of Vixeran's ascent. Perhaps the Galvox could still change, given the right guidance. If they rejected bloodlust and embraced peace, much suffering could be avoided. But Duncan knew hostile empires lurked elsewhere in the endless dark voids between the stars. Humanity must keep progressing, quietly assembling strength and allies. For the galaxy was vast and cold, and held far darker things than the Galvox. But mankind would face the coming night standing strong beside friends. And when war's clarion sounded again among the stars, humanity would answer, united and ready.